Welcome to Artco Afternoon Arts. Thank you for joining me. My name is Amber Crimmings. I am the artistic director slash cat herder at Deep Ellum Art Company. And this is Stoops. He's going to hang out, make some art with us, and create a little bit. And today is our art journal art therapy day. This is where we're going to play around in our small little book. We're going to take a couple different mediums. You know, we just uh, do something different every Tuesday, but the key to this day is taking our creativity and then putting it in with the things that we're thinking about or that we're trying to do um, with our everyday life, you know, because we want to get that creativity, that uh, right brain thinking in our right brains. We want to be in our right mind, and we want to pull that into the left side, which is our logical side of the brain. Um, I learned that a long time ago in my education, the theories on the left and the right and the side of the brain, psychologically, and the processes that they control are totally different. So that totally leads into what we're doing and what we kind of try to do when we do art therapy because it lets us deal with whatever issues might we might have in our life and deal with them in a creative manner, which can then help us maybe problem solve sometimes, or at least uh, get us set with the right kind of skills to help us get there. So if anything, we're going to at least have some fun today. I know that we do a lot of different things with our books, and Dubes likes to hang out and see what all we end up doing. Today's going to be a theme on rebirth. Now we played around last time with kind of the idea of molting our beautiful feathers and regrowing them. So you see we worked on this where we played a little bit with letting go of that realistic kind of drawing and having this nice sketch quality. But then we also kind of focused on the face so that we could pull in and get some of that beauty. And the reason why we did that with the peacock is because their face always stays the same. That beauty, that strength. They just molt all the rest of their feathers. If you didn't know that, peacocks molt all of their beautiful feathers every season, which is why they're a wonderful uh, symbolic uh, image for uh, rebirth and regrowing and why in uh, Christian art especially it was used as a representation of Jesus and the resurrection and rebirth um, in him and then also in ourselves too. So it's a fun little play that we like to pull in. You know, I like to pull a little bit of art history in too with the variety of lessons that we do, you know, I'm the kind of gal that tries to throw the whole kitchen sink in because in one way, shape, or form, we're going to work on thinking in different ways. That's what I always told my students when I worked as a public school teacher is, you know, art's not always just about drawing, you know, sculptures, uh, digital art, all kinds of stuff, but really the inherent foundation of art is learning how to see the world differently and think about the world differently, which then allows us to problem solve differently. So, in talking about that, we're going to roll into our project. Hey Bill, hey Linda, I wasn't sure if you were going to be able to join us today. I'm happy that you were. That makes me extremely excited. We're going to be working on a book and you know, maybe today I want to think a lot about concepts. You know, I said we talked about this whole regeneration of our beautiful feathers and how art is a constant agent of uh, transformation and is indeed the soul's drive to health. So now we're going to talk about our new ways of doing things or our rebirth. You know, there's a, a lot of that thought in a lot of people's brains about a variety of things, whether it's personal or business or politically for the country or family, how we're all going to kind of shift and rethink and rechange, not rechange, that's not a word, but change how we do things. And so I think this is a really fun way to kind of take it and put it on uh, paper. And when I think about birth as a mother, I think about child. I think about babies. I think about that growth of new life. And that's really what we're kind of focusing on with this, is that growth with new life. So I think I'm going to end up playing around with a picture of an infant so that I can also play around with the differences in facial proportions. So I'm going to super, super quickly, before we go into the actual drawing on our sketchbook, we're going to also tie this into yesterday's lesson when we talked about the human figure a bit. So yesterday's lesson we went a bit 
over how we set up the basic structures of the adult face. So I just kind of want to go over quickly how those structures shift and change when we actually do a child's face because a child's face is set up much different from an adult one. So let's reiterate the adult one right here and then I'll do another circle for my child's head. We'll make them about the same size so that you can kind of see, you can tell he's really interested because he's like, holy wow, how are we going to do a baby versus a man? So we're just going to play around with these. Now remember, for an adult, I'm going to half my circle and I'm going to create a whole nother thing for the rest of my chin here. Yeah? A whole nother rest of my thing for my chin. Now for a baby, child, it's not going to be about the same. I'm actually going to take only about a quarter of that and I'm going to create a little shorter, fatter chin and this is going to end up changing the dimensions on here. Now remember, this is like the eyebrow, here's the nose, here's a spot for the eyes and the spot for the mouth on the adult, right? Remember how we had all this stuff set up so that we could go in and create like this kind of image of a person. So if I built a rectangle right here, you'd see about halfway is where those eyes kind of sit for an adult. Now if I go in here and build another rectangle right here, I'm going to set the eyes in a totally different spot because remember we haven't grown out as a child so there's that really big head and the smaller facial features that are set closer together. And so what's really going to happen is in the last third is where all of the facial features are going to go. So the eyes are actually going to go where typically the nose might go. And then I'm going to throw my nose right here and my mouth right here. And you see how those facial features closer together kind of help soften up that face. Then we can go in and do the ears. And you see how that creates you know, we've got in our adult face here, and then our kid face here. And so it changes up how it looks. We end up shifting all of the proportions of where that eye, nose, and mouth go. And remember, this is our basics, you know, going back to proportions, part of our elements and principles of art. So changing those proportions slightly just by shifting most of that facial structure down on the entire uh, uh, space that is the head, that's what allows us to kind of be that magician trick between an adult and a child. So that's a fun little shift on facial proportions. You can look those up uh, in order to work on um, you know, some other drawings in the future. But really what I want to do in this one again, I'm thinking about birth and rebirth. So I really just kind of want to go in and get like a fun little image of a baby. So I found this cute little uh, image of this cute little baby and so I'm going to go in and I'm going to start building the structures for this. You know remember I'm always trying to look for basic structure shapes things like ovals, circles, etc. so I can kind of build out basically where I'm going to want everything to be. That way I can go in and I can start refining and getting all of my all of my pieces in where I want them to go. And so I'm going in making sure that I'm being careful on all of this. Making sure I get a And I'm just really trying to practice. I'm practicing out right now the skill of realistic drawing. So I'm going to take in and I'm going to try to get my line work in for the small portion on this entire paper that I'm working on. I'm really just working on the baby part. And again, it's going to start, it's going to look kind of, you know, awkward teenage phase. We all go through that. You know, we're all learners. Nobody 
knows everything right out the get-go. And so I'm just going in and I'm just trying to add in some little basic shapes here. So that I can get all of this stuff in. And then we can make sure that we like the layout of everything. And so I'm just going in, getting this done, getting this drawn. Now I've got a great little foot right here with all these cute little baby beans. So I'm going to get those all drawn in. We'll get that foot taken care of here in a bit. Oh yeah, this will be fun. I'm going to go in here too with some charcoal. Remember, I'm just laying out some basic kind of line shapes right now. But you know, I'm just being careful and I'm just playing around with getting all of my shapes in. Okay, so I can kind of switch over now. I'm going to go over and I'm going to start playing around with refining more. Actually, I'm going to erase out some of my sketch. And this is where I'm just kind of taking my eraser real light. Because what it'll do is it'll drag out my lighter ones and allow me to play more with my darker. So I'm just going to go in and start adding in some of the shading. And I'm really going to work on refining some of this. all drawn. Now I'm also thinking about this idea of, you know, rebirth. We're starting to kind of re-emerge from things. And so we're all kind of, you know, going through this little long version of uh, rebirthing on here. And so this is a nice way to kind of farm out and think about this, I think. And now I want to make sure that I'm keeping my nice little curve on these little nice baby rules because these are going to help me. They're going to help me with creating some of my shading in here. That's going to help me create this idea of a form. Remember, we're trying to trick the eye into thinking this is a form here. This is a rounded baby and not a, just a piece of paper with charcoal or graphite on it. So we want to make sure that we're focusing on that. We're not forgetting that as we work. I'm trying to remember that as I go in and set some of my little wrinkle structures in here. There's not much uh, on the baby that's super dark, but there's enough. our shadow work going. Remember, it might look a little, a little weird. That's okay. We can make it through the awkward teenage phase. Like, we're starting to get there. Starting to get there, guys. You'll be alright. Trust the process. You know, relax a little. I'm going to add some 
tiny little changes on there. See how the eyes, once we start getting this stuff in, boy, it really starts coming together. I'm just saying. It really starts coming together. Oh, you see that? Look, I'm going to get you guys closer so that you can see better. I don't know for sure if I've got all the right stuff in there, but we're going to at least kind of work with that. Get some of that shading in there. Now we've got a great little shadow going. I want to make sure I get that other wrinkle underneath the eye. And then I'm going in and getting this eyebrow in. As well as some of the shading that might be taking place in the forehead above. So you see how I'm just working on this, just kind of building and trying to really gently build that shadow. You know, maybe I didn't make the head tall enough. So I might have to go in and change some of that, you know. But again, this is meant to be our practice here. So I don't want to spend too much time. I'm just going to build this little braid kind of. Look through there. That way we can represent that flower a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to go in and build the hair around. And so I'm just going in and I'm building the hair. Just trying to make sure then I'm following in with some of the stuff that I see in the photo. That way I am working on building the hair in a kind of realistic, realistic fashion. Following in. There we go. So we're building kind of, maybe I did make the head too big. Ah, that'll work. That's good enough for government work. So we are really focusing again, we're focusing on this idea of rebirth, which I wanted to have that baby in there and play around with getting some of that stuff realistically built. So I'm going to go in and I'm really just going to create some really cool, I don't know, kind of make it feel like I've got something that kind of seats it in there. And I'm going to give a really nice dark contrast around here because I want this to kind of pop out for sure. So I'm just using my pencil. I'm using a graphite pencil here, a nice ebony pencil. so that I could get some really nice dark darks. And I'm just gonna use this to kind of create this idea of, I don't know, like, you know, how you see babies kind of wrapped up in fabric for photos, like storks, etc., bundled up like burritos. So we're just gonna get some of that on there. Maybe I'll use my finger and get some of that stuff smudged out so we have a really cool little smudge. So now I'm gonna start thinking about like all my ideas of, you know, what it'd be like as a, I don't know, today I'm a newborn baby of sorts, yeah? And so what that would be like. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna kinda create some big idea circles. And we're just gonna add these in here. And you know, I'm not gonna make them super perfect. We're just gonna kinda get these guys built in and playing around with the circles that way we've got
got some stuff that we can kind of, you know, what our thoughts are. And maybe we can throw our little thought bubble circles around and that'll give us a really cool kind of visual to fill out the background. Yeah, so this is fun during our thinking process as we play around with these in order to, uh, you know, think about what it might be like to start fresh, releasing, you know, releasing anxiety and hesitancy. Yeah, so you start fresh. Now you you draw what what resonates with you. You know, I give you these prompts for art journals, and I give you these ideas where I kind of flow and kind of help you see how my brain works a little bit as we work from these prompts. Because I try to work on the fly too a little bit. That way, I'm also again I'm showing you the creative process, and that creative process is not just doing things step by step that somebody else tells you. But that creative process is problem solving for yourself. And so when you think about things that are newborn, rebirth, starting over, you know, perhaps a baby isn't in there, but you know, that's okay. You draw you and you do you. This is going to be something that is wonderful uh, for, uh, you know, brainstorming, etc. So I'm just going to start talking about all the things that, you know, I love that I always want to make sure that I'm working on, you know. I always want to make sure that I'm working on uh, the youth, like my kids, and I'll just call that youth because sometimes that's not just my own kids, but that's somebody else. Else, you know. So I want to make sure that that's good. That's good work, and that you know we've got a good uh, conversation. And see, I'm just free flowed writing it. Have you ever? For a paper done free flow writing um, with your kind of bubble flow uh, outlines in order to pull thoughts together and pull plans together and these same uh, sorts of graphing and brainstorming processes we use for business in order to eke out and farm out ideas so this really is taking a process that we use in other professional careers for other reasons and we're applying it in making ourselves a priority and using this process to uh, also work on ourselves as well. Bill says uh, looking great, love how the texture of paper is part of the drawing. Yeah, that's what I like about using even drawing on watercolor paper. It gives it a real neat kind of fun texture. Yeah, I'm so happy. You guys, Bill knows what happened but I slammed, ooh, I slammed my finger in a door. It was like twice the size and uh, it's not twice the size anymore and I survived. It just, I needed some tape, duct tape, it fixed it. It's, that's the, always the army way. It's either duct tape, super glue, or what's the other one? Duct tape, super glue, there's something else that's uh, handy all the time. Ah, uh, 550 cord, that's always handy. So there's certain basics and all that jazz. So like, you know, things that I always want to, you know, make sure I'm, I'm working on is personal health. And so this is the part where we're just going in and we're kind of filling in the things that are super personal um, for you. What are the things that as you start out you want to make sure that you maintain as a priority or you keep as a priority, starting fresh. What are the things that you, uh, as everything's all crazy, if you could, should, would, what uh, would you restart and what would you change um, for the good and positive benefit for your life, for your home, or your work, or for your happiness? You know, these are all things that are important that we percolate on and that we think about and that we write down because when we percolate, think, and write, it helps seed it in our brains more. And you're like, why do I need to seed it in my brain? Because obviously if it's something I like, I'm thinking about it. But sometimes it takes you a couple minutes to think, doesn't it, when I ask you these questions? which means it's not on the forefront of your brain, which is why we do things like this. That's the focus of art therapy, is that we're, we're applying these concepts that bring it to the forefront so we think about it more, which in turn helps us. That brainstorming, that self-brainstorming, makes it so it's part of our perception and what we're thinking and looking for. Kind of like when you look for a red car, you see it. So if we can get you to seeing 
new starts and progress and possibility, then hopefully the key or the, the goal is that throughout the rest of your day, this helps bring that to the forefront so that when opportunity does walk past you, you're going to be like, hot dang, I did that art therapy lesson and it made me think about opportunity and now I saw it, right? It helps you see those things around. It sounds crazy, but it's totally true and a ton of... Uh, you know, self-work uh, writers and, and uh, public speakers will tell you, oh, I, I wrote that totally wrong, will tell you the same thing, you know, uh, what you focus on. Okay, so self-work, always working on ourself, you know, it's all, it's all a journey, it's uh, always making sure that I'm a student. You know, I want to make sure I'm always learning from those around me and that I'm surrounding myself with peers that help me grow, right? So, you know, as we're thinking about, you know, uh, doing all that, making sure that you surround yourself with good mentors and peers, right? And friends, right? Our friendships, our relationships. Sometimes when I talk and write at the same time, it confuses my brain. I'm sure it does for a lot of people. And my handwriting does tend to get messy sometimes. I do like uh, doing the very nice handwriting, which I can do because my mom was very British, so uh, there was the ruler to have proper posture, and then we also wrote our names very proper. So I had an odd upbringing between my British mom and all the strange animals country slash city. I kind of just had every experience as a child. I like it. I wasn't all country. I wasn't all city. I wasn't... Yeah, it was, it was fun. Diverse is a, is a wonderful thing. Uh, so, alright, and then of course we all want to jumpstart our, our money stuff and working ideas and then plans, right? We always want to and we want to be saving. I'm always pretty conservative when it comes to that and budgets and all that jazz and you know in here in general in between all my bubbles can be like my big stuff that applies to everything so I can write all my my goals in there and then my passions right and then of course community is huge to me because to me community is like family and it's important that we grow that, so I want to make sure that I do that. And, you know, we do that through talking and communing, being together. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. So this is a really fun way. You know, we only use, oh, I've got love. Oh, yeah, love is in there. Passion kind of fills that, but I'm going to make sure I've got that in there. We, you know what? That's so important. We're going to make sure that's in there. A bunch of times because there's so many different forms of love between you know the uh, uh, romantic kind but then the love for others and neighbors and the love for uh, you know our family and love for animals and all kinds of jazz well thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. It seems I put the cat to sleep. I hope I didn't do the same with you. I think it was a really fun way to take on this idea of rebirth, kind of continuing on the theme that we played around with last week with the peacock. And so instead of just partially doing a restart, because that's what the re peacock was more for, kind of like that partial molting of feathers and redoing, um, this is for that total kind of fresh start, etc. We can all be like newborns, I think. Um, I think it's hard to get our brains to go that way, but it's really mostly about willing to wake up and be a beginner every morning. And a lot of that takes setting ego aside and uh, being able to rethink every process down to the details on how things are done so that we can always avoid that trap of well, that's how it's always been done. Well, you know, I know that everybody notices the entire world's becoming quite different. So it's important that we brainstorm on how to be different and how to wake up different uh, and brand new every day so that we're better suited for those challenges, both in our tools, but then also in uh, our mindset and how we're thinking. So 
Let's see what Bill says. I've got love in there. Always a pleasure. Thank you, as always, for hanging out with me, you guys. I will be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. It'll be Wacky Wednesday. We're going to do some painting. It'll be a blast, so make sure you tune in. Um, Thursdays, our Throwback Thursday, so that's catered more to our younger audience with elementary style projects. So if you've got our younger Art Co. crowd, make sure you tune in for that and create with us. Friday is Friday. Saturday we've got a brand new long-term project coming up. We've got a lot of new stuff going on at Art Co. Make sure you check our live streams for music and art. Make sure you take a look at our virtual art galleries. We have brand new art up for sale by artists, 100% donated to Art Co. and operations to help us continue to keep the doors open. And make sure, as always, that you're taking a look at our donation links and you're sharing out info about us. We do so much to promote, grow, and uh, dedicate uh, community to creatives and creatives to community. Uh, please make sure that you're showing support in a multitude of ways. We are going to have our yard open here, uh, hopefully uh, mid-month, so excited to be rebooting some events and getting some plans in and things happening so that we can be all prepared and ready to uh, accept and have people hosted in our yard again, which we are ever so excited and happy about. He's excited about coming to hang out, and I'm excited, of course, to be able to work with help mentor and grow uh, our artists in person. So you guys have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you tomorrow.